Today we pit two mighty forces against each other in a battle of the digital brains. We're having a look at generative AI versus the old school AI and seeing who can do the most amazing train junctions. Let's have a bit of a showdown. Hello there, Master Hellish here and welcome to a full on comparison of AI built junctions in OpenTTD. We've got three types of junctions because it's not just the AI, we're also going to be looking at some real human junctions too. We're going to be comparing the new modern generative AI, the sort of AI you see in the news and plastered in every little app that you could possibly download. And we're going to be pitching it against the game standard AI. This AI is just a term for computer controlled player in the game of OpenTTD and was very common when the game was first made around 30 years ago. But to give it a fair chance, I didn't just ask it a random question about junctions. I fed it the full transcript of my own junction design tutorial, so it had some sort of proper understanding of what makes a good junction in OpenTTD. And then I built some of the results in the game and put them to the test, and the outcomes were interesting. So stick around, because we're going to find out which one is really better at junctions. But before we get carried away with the craziness that comes with generative AI, let's take a look at some of the old school AI junctions in action. Here we have a world full of AI competitors. All of these companies have come in and I haven't laid a single bit of track. This has all been done by the old school AI. Now, where possible, I have told the AI not to build anything but trains. But some of the AIs don't have this option, so they've built both and there's some road vehicles around as well. So let's take a look at some of the junctions. Well, the first thing you might notice is there aren't many. A lot of these lines, even the dual track lines, go up and down the world and connect to stations end to end. This is a good way of simplifying the railways. It means the AI can get a route up and running and it doesn't have to worry about the complexity and issues that can come with creating the junctions. There are, however, some AIs that are more ambitious than others, and some of them will build single track lines that include passing places. These are a kind of junction, or at least two junctions at the either end of a passing place. Very simple, just a little signal each way, so one train can go one way, and one train can go the other, and they can wait if the line ahead is not free. Simple, but effective. Whilst that is effective, it's not as effective as building a full dual track line, and that's what most of the AIs do. But these are even more complex to be able to connect together, but there are instances where the AI does try to do this. Here we have an example of a junction. Now this one is right outside the train station, which you can ignore. Here we have a kind of T-junction, although the trains can only travel in one direction along the top of the T. This sort of junction is more common from the AIs on the game. When you see a T-junction, it's very often like this. A piece of track going over or under so that it doesn't cross against the lines, and then they just connect up to the line. There's also a lot of harsh corners in these. The AI doesn't seem to put any sort of penalty on small, tight corners that slows the trains down. Here's another example of a T-junction that's just been built by the AI. Now, it isn't the best. In fact, it's extremely wonky. It doesn't even look like a T. However, the basic fundamentals are still there. The lines split out, connect back up, and don't cross each other. In fact, in this case, the AI's put a couple of bridges in just to ensure that that crossing doesn't take place. Now, this is in that category where it will work, but it's not efficient. You put a lot of throughput through this junction, it could potentially cause problems, especially if you had some long trains. But the problems are mostly due to the windiness of the track and the tight corners. If you make it a bit more smooth but use the same concept, this could be quite good. In my testing, there was one AI that stood out above all the others when it came down to junctions, and that is the Choo Choo AI. The Choo Choo AI makes a complex web of railway lines with simple junctions at its heart. Now these are quite interesting because sometimes they conform to this basic standard here, and other times they use this basic T-junction like this. 
but occasionally it will also create some variations on this, some of which are rather wonky. Now the good thing about these designs is they work. The trains go up and down the lines, waiting for each other, moving and continuing on to where they need to go. Also, these junctions are really tight, small and compact, which can be a good thing if you're trying to fit your railway line in amongst other networks. But it's actually quite a bad thing if a train needs to turn a corner. Trains will slow down if the corners are too tight. Now, how much they slow down and how tight they need to be depends on a number of factors. As a general rule, small ones like this are nearly always bad. So as a general rule, the computer AI in OpenTTD can make junctions, doesn't often do so, and when it does, they're usually quite messy and not very good for throughput. However, they do work and function okay. It's quite rare you see a train with deadlock or getting lost on the AI networks. And a quick honourable mention for some of the weird and wacky designs that you can get out of the AI for their railways. For example, here we've got a station, but the angle wasn't quite right to get in, so several ups and downs and round a harsh corner, and the trains can get to where they need to go. Again, it's not necessarily that efficient, but it does work. Now to compare those simple AI designs to human designs, we've come over to my Series 11 Let's Play, where I have a number of different sorts of junction designs all over the map. Here we have a simple T-junction, and in this T-junction, the track can only T in one direction. This one is a little bit different from the AI ones, because the lengths are long, straight, and the corners are neat. Doing so keeps the trains running at optimal speeds. This T-junction is a bit more complex, now, you have to ignore the maglev line running through it, but it is essentially a three-way junction. And the way that it's done is to simplify it. We have a junction where the track splits into two different directions. We have a, another junction where the track splits into two different directions. And then we have a third junction where the track splits in two different directions. And then all of these are linked together, making the three little junctions into one big junction. Doing it like this is really good because you get nice big long straight lines and your trains can move efficiently through the junction. And also you can get around other things. It gives you the flexibility to be able to get over rivers or round industries. And finally, one more T-junction. This is a version that I created off of a design from Guild Games. This particular one works quite nicely with the flow and being able to get up and over the various different segments of track. Of course, us humans also build junctions that we would not necessarily recommend. This junction is bad for a number of reasons, but it's not as bad as it was when I first built it. This junction is bad because it's got depots on the junction, and this was an attempt to try and see if we can make a junction efficient, but also give the trains access to the junctions from any direction. Now, this somewhat actually manages to comply with that, and the trains usually do quite well. But as a general rule, it is definitely not advised to put depots on the junction. But for some reason, us humans do things like this anyway. This particular design is an adaptation of Miller Lowell's design and it's been expanded so the trains can fit down the diagonals without causing too many problems. Now this one, again in some ways, is just splitting the line up into a number of directions in a number of times. Here we split the lines in three different directions, three, three and three, and they all then go and connect across each other with nice straight, nice neat lines, no sharp corners or kinks in here. And this is actually a relatively good design and allows with the flexibility of the trains to go in any direction. Of course, this particular junction is with just two tracks going in each of the four directions. What if you add more? Well, unfortunately, you end up with something a little bit like this. This is a junction I designed and I built it over the course of a live stream with various different junctions going in all different directions. This one's a little bit more tightly compact. You can't really break it up into its components and each bit loops round onto another part. 
The complexity of this one comes from the extra lines. We've got a dual track coming in from one of the directions and a dual track going out, and then a dual track going in and out in an opposite direction on the other side of the junction. Overall, this junction works really well. In this set of junctions, there's various different lines coming in from different locations, and we have to just figure out what bit a track needs to go where for each individual purpose. Sometimes it's not as simple as just having one line going that way and two lines going this. Sometimes you need to split them up, move them around, and link them in all sorts of different ways. And that's exactly what's happened here. This junction has built and changed over time. It wasn't just put in when the lines were there, it evolved and grew and got changed a number of times to make sure that the trains would flow around it efficiently. So you can see when it comes to junction designs, the human ones tend to be much neater, much better flowing, and of course, they usually work. This design is what the AI is calling a dual track split first roundabout. Now, the diagram isn't perfect, the AI failed to connect the black lines to the inner ring, but I've given it the benefit of the doubt on that, and I've built it in OpenCTD. And here it is, and at first glance, it doesn't look too bad. As a general rule, you've got bits splitting in and splitting out, and I've used bridges to make sure that those rings don't interfere with each other. As the AI specifically said in its description, that there should be no crossovers between the up and down line. It also says that signals would go before the splits and merges, and the train length spacing is assumed. So I've put the signals in as well, and as a general rule, yes, I think that looks quite nice. However, I've got a funny feeling that this has got a fatal flaw. Right, we've got a few trains coming now from various different directions. Pretty much all of them are now turning onto the outer ring as they're entering the junction and uh, we've now got a few more trains coming in now they are stopping nicely and waiting for each other within that ring and uh, then the next train is coming on and they are merging nicely down there too uh, however have you noticed the fatal flaw yet um yes the, the trains can't actually leave the junction uh, all they can do is enter this outer ring and then just keep going around and around they can't exit at all reviewing the design and what the ai was trying to do it was trying to create as few crossings as possible and it actually said specifically that there's no crossovers between the up and down traffic this is what traps the trains in the junction although the ai did say that every train can enter from one side and exit to any other while staying on the correct line obviously has no clue about actually what was happening Ironically, if you get rid of the bridges and then just connect up the track to the exit lines, this actually works okay. Now, you may need to make it bigger depending on the length of your trains, and the inside section is completely useless, but this then creates a not too bad roundabout. The next design that the generative AI came up with was something it called a double spiral junction, and this is the design. I found it quite hard to interpret this, and I tried to work out exactly what we was trying to do. This is what I built in OpenTTD. I wasn't sure, so I asked the AI if this is what it was trying to go for. Its response, yes, this is an excellent visual representation of the fully connected spiral style design junction for OpenTTD, and it improves dramatically on conceptual designs previous. It did then go on to offer some advice and say that the elevation separation on the central crossover could be done. So let's do that now. Now here I have to agree with the AI. Separating these two lines using elevation was a really good idea. However, the junction overall is not really a good idea. There's too many tracks crossing over each other, too many different ways that trains could get in the way of each other. Throwing some trains on the track demonstrates how this doesn't work. We've got trains going down the wrong way and getting stuck behind signals. We've got trains stopping and waiting in front of other trains. The path signals just can't cope with the various different ways that things are going. Here, trains should be able to get from wherever they want to go to wherever they want to go, but it is not efficient. They keep turning around and keep getting in the way of each other. Now the question is, could we fix this? And the answer is yes, but it would just end up looking like this one that we looked out earlier. 
And for the last example, I thought I would go a little easier on the AI and ask it for a T junction. And this is what it came up with. Now, at first, this looks like it could be a good T junction. And then I noticed some extra lines connecting up the diagonals to each other right here. So I asked it about this. And the AI said that it was merely a visual artifact caused by it trying to show us the up and down segments in the drawing. So what it actually meant was something like this. And this is actually very much like what we would build on our lines. So it got a good T junction. It seems like reducing the complexity means that it followed the rules. Tracks went over the top of each other using inclines and they didn't cross and it also used some nice diagonals so that trains wouldn't slow down too much when turning. However, I felt like giving it a final little challenge, and I asked it to add the signals. The way in which it suggested signals seemed a little bit confusing again, but using a mixture of the diagram and the text that preceded it, I've put the signals in on my best guess of what it was trying to do. It's clear that it knows what it's trying to do, but whether it's making it and actually doing it or not seems to be a completely different thing. It's telling me it wants signals right before all the merges and splits. It's telling me that it wants no signals immediately after the merges, and it's telling me that merges shouldn't block the main line. And all of these basic concepts seem to be right for this junction. So I threw some trains onto the line, and yes, this does work. Signals aren't really exactly where I would have put them, but I'm not going to complain too much. So was our more modern AI able to come up with something that was even better than the old school AI and the humans? In short, no, no, it, it didn't. It got confused at the level of complexity. It was interesting to see what it was trying to do and it seemed to be trying to do the right things but either it failed to communicate it effectively or it just really didn't quite execute on it where the generative ai did come into its own is when it was used in a collaborative effort if i made a bit of junction and gave it to the ai it was able to interpret this as what it was and make suggestions for changes or upgrades and actually, this is how I see AI being used the best in our current level of technology. You use it as a tool to go backwards and forwards, a collaborative tool. If you just take what the AI does and blurt it out wherever you want to blurt it, then it's going to be broken. It's not going to work very well. Trains are just going to come into the middle and get stuck. But if you go backwards and forwards with the AI, work with it to generate something together, then I think the output of whatever you could do is potentially better than what either one of you could do by yourselves. So did we take a big leap forward? Did we find something new and profound? Or did we just learn that it's not really very good? Well, it is a bit rubbish, isn't it? Most of the stuff that I got it to do just didn't work. It seemed like it had some good ideas, but failed to get there. As for the old school OpenTTD AI, that seems to do quite well. And if you want to see more videos about the OpenTTD AI, I have a number of AI battle videos in a nice little playlist, which I'll make sure is linked on the screen at the end and in the description. But that's going to be all from me for now. I hope you enjoyed this little insight into the different AIs and the workings of junctions in OpenTTD. And goodbye. Mm -hmm.